Mic check. Mic check. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> we're live and the VR is crappy, thanks to Oculus. I don't know why. It is jittery, just like sort of what it was like last time too. I think it's because of the Oculus mirror, but for whatever reason, half the time, the shield to stream to just does not show up. And this chat arena window just, it, like, it doesn't want to go where it's supposed to go. They've really screwed things up, like, a lot. Look at this nonsense. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I guess it's just... That's where it is. That's where it is. And there's nothing we can do about that. Let's see if we can get ourselves going here. We can make this flight. We're in the TBM. For the first time in a while. because we are just doing this is just a short flight didn't need to bust out the the jet for this one. Oh, I've missed the beautiful Garmin displays though the beautiful Garmin displays are really nice is a beautiful plane like it is a nicer cockpit too much tequila gives you the shakes yeah I wish I wish that was the case demon um, I don't know if it's that shaky on the stream or not doesn't seem like it's maybe that bad but I have not quite found like there's something something is uh, seems to be wrong most of the time with the VR these days just kind of frustrating But, that's okay. I don't think we need the flashlight. We are good. Um, let's see, I don't know what frequency we're supposed to be on. Usually... Oh, son of a bitch. Oh no, it is working. Why am I not seeing it? Okay, I'm just blind. I don't know where to look anymore. It's been too long. It has its moments when it shakes, but other times it's smooth. Yeah, see, it's just... It used to be perfect, and then they messed with it. Chalk 280 radio check. Chalk 280, you are loud and clear. Alright, let's see if we can get uh, this sorted out. Chalk 280, ready to copy IFR clearance. Chalk 280, contact clearance delivery on 120.7. Enjoy your afternoon. At least they're telling us when we're on the wrong frequency. Chalk 280, ready to copy IFR clearance. Chalk 280 is cleared to Mike Sierra Sierra Sierra. Climb via the pale and departure with the middle transition, then as filed. Expect departure runway 02. Climb to 14,000 feet via the departure. Expect higher clearances 6 minutes after departure. Squawk 3520. Roger that, shock to it's zero. Pretty sure that we should have. Oh, why is this thing not working? Chalk two eight zero, ready to copy IFR clearance. Copy one five, Mike. One four seven five. Chalk two eight zero is cleared to Mike Sierra Sierra Sierra. Climb via the pale and departure with the middle transition, then as five. Expect departure runway zero two. Climb to one four thousand feet via the departure. Expect higher clearances six minutes after departure. Squawk 3520. Uh, 705-1009. Uh, 1509. Uh, one five five. I don't know why my shortcut button for... The co-pilot repeating stuff seems to have stopped working. 
which is too bad. Chalk 280 ready to taxi. Chalk 280, this is La Aurora clearance delivery on 120.7. Please repeat your request. I'm crying out loud. Chalk 280 ready to copy IFR clearance. Chalk 280 is cleared to Mike Sierra Sierra Sierra. Climb via the Palin departure with the Megal transition, then as filed. Expect departure runway 02. Climb to 14,000 feet via the departure. Expect higher clearances 6 minutes after departure. Squawk 3520. Cleared as filed. Chalk 280. I really wish I knew. Why? This is no longer working. <sighs> One more try. Chalk 280 ready to copy IFR clearance. Chalk 280 is cleared to Mike Sierra Sierra Sierra. Climb via the Palin departure with the metal transition, then as filed. Expect departure runway 02. Climb to 14,000 feet via the departure. Expect higher clearances 6 minutes after departure. Squawk 3520. Chalk 280 is cleared to Mike Sierra Sierra Sierra. Climb via the Palin departure. With the Megal transition, then is filed. Climb to 1 4,000 feet via the departure. My co pilot. Expect higher clearances six minutes after departure. Squawk Saying all the things that I can't be bothered to remember. Chalk 280, read back direct. Altimeter 3030, contact ground on 121.9 when ready to taxi. Enjoy your afternoon. Altimeter 3030, ground on 121.9 at Chalk 280. Chalk 280 ready to taxi. Chalk 280 taxi to runway 02 via taxiways Bravo. Hold short runway 02. Taxi to runway 02 via taxiways Bravo. Hold short runway 02 chalk 280. I basically just have my co-pilot do the radio and the readbacks while I'm on the ground because it's honestly easier instead of having to read back all that stuff. I assume this is taxiway Bravo. I'm not sure. So I don't know why half the time I can't stream this stuff the way that I want to. It's super annoying because this gives me the choppiness. The other one yesterday gave me the white flashes, so I don't know which one's better or worse. They're equally shitty. Even though the good thing is about the stutteriness is only on the ground, so at least this should go away once we're in the sky. But I don't know why half the time my Chromecast doesn't show up to stream to, and when I use the Oculus Mirror app, um, it's, I think that's what's causing the stuttering. I just can't handle it because I have to have the second display going and stuff, and it's just, it's just not good. It's not good! Plus Chatterino just, it, it just keeps blinking in and out because they screwed it all up. There's nothing to buy, Demon. Like, there is, there is literally, there, there is nothing better to buy. <laughs> That's just not even an option. If it was, I would have already done that. It's this is software. I would have to go Chalk kick Mark Zuckerberg in the tower in the balls. On one one eight decimal one. Have a good afternoon. Tower on one one eight decimal one. Chalk two eight zero. Chalk two eight zero. Ready for departure. Runway zero two. Chalk to 80 winds are 029 er at 14 knots cleared for takeoff. Runway 02 squawk 3520. Cleared for takeoff. Runway 02 squawking 3520. Chalk 280. 
Yeah, I wish I had that skill. I do not have the skill to design new software to make this happen. Uh, nor do I want to, because it was working fine. I just want them to undo whatever nonsense they did to this one. But that's not happening either, so I just have to be patient. The Really, the, the, the main issue, honestly, seems to be the fact that sometimes the Chromecast just does not show up. Which is really stupid. But it is what it is. The good thing is I'm pretty sure that once we get off the ground here, this choppiness is going to go away. So, that's what we're going to be counting on anyways. We'll arm our vertical speed mode here for a decent climb. Vertical 6 is on, good morning, are you ready? And off we go. Vertical 6 is on, echo 5, line up for race, one Echo 5, line up for one echo 5, line up for race, one echo it does look like it might be a little bit cloudy here, so... Here's Guatemala. That was quite a nice approach the other day, to be perfectly honest. Got a nice six box, got the base on seven zero degrees five, just six ten, one eight ten to good land. Good land, one eight ten to get a nice six box. It's also entirely possible that we just haven't had these issues because we had been flying in sort of much less populated areas than, than this Guatemala is. You can see there's a lot going on here below us. Maybe we were just lucky before. I suppose that is a possibility. Zero contact Central America Center on one two three decimal niner. Good day. Center on one two three decimal niner. Shock two eight zero. Chuck 280 climbing through 7000 for flight level 140. Chuck 280, good afternoon. Squawk 3520. We'll turn our anti ice thing on because it is, it is looking kind of wet. It's warm ish. Well, 10 degrees. Whatever the ISA was, which I've already forgotten, is negative one. On that note, El Salvador has a population of 6.4 million in an area slightly smaller than the state of Massachusetts or Wales. This makes El Salvador the most densely populated country in the Americas. Wow. Well, maybe that's why we're having such poor performance here. Too many people. I'm sure that's not what the real reason is, but you never know. The cockpit also seems to be super sluggish. Maybe that's just because I turned the refresh rates down, but I don't know. <clears throat> it's all a little bit more of a struggle than it was, I feel like. But we are coping. <clears throat> We're actually doing all right here. Got ourselves on a nice course. We've got everything dialed in. Uh, the weather looks pretty crappy, but I think we're going to end up above the clouds. Um, let's turn the weather radar on for a minute. Oh, that's right. It doesn't give you a nice overlay. I'm used to that from the uh, from the other plane, from the jet, which has a nice display on that. Struggling to perform for some reason. Right or are we playing this game right now? Yeah, that still works. Thank you. Why does this not work?
Am I looking at the wrong thing? Oh, I was looking at the wrong thing. Some, something here is a little out of whack. There we go. Got it right. <clears throat> All right, we're above the clouds already, so that's nice. We're going to be flying at 15,000 feet, I think, most of the time, which looks like we're going to have, uh, we will be nicely above the clouds here. Which is nice. Chalk to eight zero climb and maintain one five thousand feet. Climb and maintain one five thousand feet, chalk to eight zero. Our cruising altitude. Yeah, so no white flashes with this method, but I'm pretty sure the choppiness has to be due to not being able to cast directly from the headset and instead having to use my PC. So I got to make a couple of adjustments for this uh, for next week. Or not even next week. I'm hoping to make another flight tomorrow from El Salvador to Honduras, which is another reasonably short flight, which will probably do in. Mm, I don't know. I'll have to I'll have to look at the times and see how long it takes. Probably fly it in the CJ4 in the jet. It's a bit of a trade-off. Like this, the jet takes longer to get ready on the ground than the TBM, but it flies faster. I feel like the TBM is simpler to get going. Even though I think that is just my inexperience, to be honest. I don't know why it keeps warning about the inertial separator being on when I do this. It seems I think that's a bug in the in the, in the Garmin mod. <laughs> Anyways, we have reached our cruising altitude. Weather is beautiful. Let's have a look outside. See, it's nice and smooth when you're up here. The only time I know it's an issue is because the chatter, you know, the, the screen overlay keeps blinking in and out. Unlike Ibiza, I didn't see that El Salvador has new beaches, sorry. Well... We're not going to get close enough to see anyway. I love seeing like some of these mountains below us just peeking out through the clouds. It's beautiful. And we should have a nice tracker going on the stream there, I think, I hope. Hopefully that's showing up okay. So I think I will try the, probably try the jet tomorrow, actually, because I need to at some point get a baseline because I keep switching between planes and then between different ways of, of getting the display out that, uh, that it just it makes it difficult to see if anything I'm doing has any kind of positive effect on performance here. So far, it's pretty much the same. Good, good. Tracker looks good, and hopefully you can see the little arrow on it some indication of where we're at in the grand scheme of things. Uh, our departure ends here at this next waypoint. Yep, you can see the arrow. Sweet. Good stuff. I don't know why I feel more comfortable in the TBM 930 than the CJ4, but I think that's just a matter of being used to it. We do have like 18, I think this is leg 21, so all but two of those legs, so 19 legs were flown in the CJ4. Not all in VR, of course, but uh, 
I still feel like a mod that would turn off the the co-pilot display would be would be helpful for performance, but what do I know? So we now have um, South American ATC conversations as well. So we hear a few more of the South American accents. I mean, generally, ATC stuff's pretty international because you've got a lot of pilots flying all over the world, so... I think the, uh... Accents are pretty, uh, tame. Uh, quick look. I think Imalu at the top there is our arrival, so we don't... This is not a very long flight. Um, I think... Flight Simulator had this as a 17-minute flight in the jet, and like a 40-minute flight in the TBM. And we're already at cruising altitude, so... I don't know why the autopilots just have to adjust a lot. El Salvador, known as the land of the volcanoes because of the more than 20 volcanoes in the in, in the territory. You know, that doesn't surprise me. I don't know if we're actually crossed into El Salvador yet here. Um, I don't think this really gives us borders. But like a lot of these mountains look very uh, volcano-ish. We get to avoid, like, it's kind of nice we get to see quite a bit when we flew to uh, Honduras, sorry, to uh, Guatemala yesterday, there was not a lot of visibility, most of the, most of the flight was nicely above the clouds, nice and sunny, but didn't get to see much of the scenery because it was all covered in clouds, but that's what live weather gets you. So right now it seems like the uh, the clouds are staying away from us nicely, giving us a nice clear path here by the looks of it, along the west coast of uh, Guatemala and El Salvador. Chalk 280 expect the VOR approach to runway 15 with the Imalu transition at Ilopango International cleared direct to Megaldense direct Imalu. Expect the VOR approach to runway 15 with the Imalu transition cleared direct Megaldense direct Imalu Chalk 280. If I push the button in time I can get my lovely non-existent co-pilot voice to do the readbacks for me on some of the more complicated ones. But that was basically already our clearance for our approach. This is going to be an interesting approach because I don't think this has... It's not ILS, it's not RNAV. I think this is a purely visual approach. So I'm really hoping that there's not going to be any clouds. Uh, because, I mean, I guess we do have it programmed in, but so I'm not entirely sure how this is going to work. It's going to be an interesting landing. A bit of a more manual landing. The thing that I'm also really missing from the jet, actually, like, I, I like the fanciness of these displays, but I, I do miss uh, the jet has got a nice uh, waypoint flight plan layout with the... Uh, with altitudes that I should be at for the approach and stuff. This one doesn't really have that. I mean, most of the time it doesn't even show us... It doesn't even load the flight plan in here properly for some reason. Like, it just doesn't show up. Chalk 280 descend and maintain 1-5,000 feet. 
Descend and maintain one five thousand feet. Chalk two eight zero. I don't know what happened there. I don't know. How things just changed so suddenly? Oh, and now I have the thing where the mouse cursor is gone again. This is interesting. There it is. That's bizarre. Okay, now it finally shows up. Um, so it does actually... Okay, it does have the altitudes in it. We should be descending here. Pretty soon. 7550 at Imalu. Or actually the VOR approach. 11,000 at Imalu and then 8,000. Yeah, that seems more right, I think. We will see what happens. Set ourselves a reminder that at Amala we should probably be at 11,000 feet. That's the one thing where the CJ4 uh, flight management system seems to be more reliable. I don't trust this Garmin stuff at all. That's not the Garmin's fault, it's the flight simulator's fault. Seems much too fragile and prone to causing a lot of problems. Uh, I'm trying to get a. What's the scale on this here? The other thing that it gives you is you program in a, an altitude and it tells you, like, gives you an arc as to when you're going to hit that, which is really nice. So I don't know why I don't, uh, oh man, I just, I just, I do not trust ATC with this flight plan for some reason. El Salvador has the highest murder rate in the world. Yeah, it's a... Uh, eight zero descent and maintain one three thousand feet altimeter three zero 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 and Ilopango International. Descend and maintain flight level one three zero, chalk two eight zero. Yeah, I, it is a, it is a, a rough, rough country. I have read that before. Okay, so we are slowly descending here, so that's good. Chalk 280 cleared for the VOR approach to runway 15 with the Amela transition. Cleared for the VOR approach to runway 15 with the Amalu transition. Chalk 280. plane have VNAV? It does not. It does have VNAV. I don't know if that works. Probably doesn't work. So I believe we go kind of past that that mountain there ahead of us and then land down towards behind that there should be like a lake. We land just in front of that lake. I want to take us down to 11. I mean, ATC hasn't told us that yet, but they could clear us. And the approach has us going down to 11,000 here. In fact, I am going to go ahead and arm our approach mode. lake right there. Also looks like it's a bit of a crater. A 
Okay, we are at Imalu at 11,000. We should be getting down to 8,000 at our next waypoint, so let's go down to 8. We're just going to manage this ourselves here. I don't. Th I think ATC is just kind of giving us clearance and expects us to do the rest of this ourselves. Chalk two eight zero descent via the Imalu transition to five thousand feet. Descent via the Imalu transition to five thousand feet. Chalk two eight zero. And they just made a liar out of me as they did finally give us the proper instructions. Like I said, I just I get a little antsy. Whenever it comes to altitudes, 5,000 is good though because that's going to get us all the way to a final where we need to be at 4,500. Beautiful, beautiful clear weather. This is looking pretty good. Oh, Jesus, that was quite the turbulence. On a positive note, the largest pretzel in the world was made in El Salvador and weighed 1,728 pounds. Oh man, I would die because I would try to eat it. I love me a good pretzel, like a nice soft pretzel. Okay, we are looking pretty, we'll probably can actually reduce our descent rate a little bit here. Because we are sort of ahead of schedule, we're at 8,000 feet already and we don't really need to be there yet until our next waypoint. See you, Dad! Airport. I know that's not what it's pronounced. It's going to be a nice uh, short flight, probably be on the ground in the next 10-15 minutes or so, and then I'm going to go and uh, make some pizza and watch a movie, because that's Saturday night, pizza and movie night. And it's really nice when I had a chance to get in a flight beforehand. So we've got a long way to go around the world. Let's uh, slow our descent a little bit more here. We're doing just fine. Get a pretzel. I should get a pretzel. It has been, I got a sec next time at the grocery store. Got some pretzels. It's been a long time since I had a pretzel. Pretty sure the last time I had a pretzel was at a sporting event. You know, and that's been a while. <laughs> so now we're making a little turn to the left, and then we're going to hook back around just to avoid this mountain here. Airport should be somewhere over there. Can't quite make it out. And things are definitely uh, choppier. The performance takes takes a total nosedive when I have to use Oculus Mirror. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. I don't know what the issue is there. Where sometimes, so what I usually do is I stream from the headset directly to a capture device, basically. Um, which used to give me pretty good performance because it means that the headset has to do the, the streaming and the computer, which does all the um, processing for the game, doesn't have to worry about that part. But for some reason, it is not always recognizing that, that streaming device, the Chromecast. Radar, good morning, Lauda Motion 2, 5, Matulu, passing 1, 8, climbing 2, 4, 0. Request in is released, 3, 5, 0, Ben, able and then because it isn't seeing it, it means I have to use my computer that is also churning and crunching through bits and bytes and pixels in order to display the game in all its beauty. Uh, struggles, I think, doing both of those things. 
So I think if I can solve that issue, uh, maybe I can get some joy back and make it be a little bit more smooth again. So we are headed towards that and then FF15, so we might as well descend down now to 4500. The runway is only at 2000. Uh, still pretty high elevations up here. quite see it yet. Runway heading is 15 altimeter 3000 at Ilopango International Contact Tower on 118.3. Enjoy your afternoon. Tower on 118.3, chalk 280. Chalk 280 on final approach to runway 15. Short 280 winds at 349 at 10 knots cleared to land runway 15. Clear to land runway 15, chalk 280. So there's not going to be any kind of uh, assist here. I think we're going to have to we're going to have to put this baby down ourselves, which means I really need to get eyes on this runway here, which at this point, I mean, we're still off off track, so. Let's, um, let's, oh, wait a minute, did it actually get us on a glide path? Oh, we did get on a glide path, okay. Oh, it's coming from the VOR, I guess. Unless it's just trying to get me for the 3600. We are on track. Does anybody see a runway? Oh, was that a light? Oh, I see it. I see it now. I see you. There it is. Ilopango International. Gear is down. We have... One level of flaps. That was in level of six golf kilo. Not six golf kilo, that was in upper. Wind one seven zero degrees, three knots, runway three three, clear to land. Clear to land, three kilo, six golf kilo. It's full flaps. We're looking good. We are looking good. It's gonna get choppy here with all these buildings rendering in here any moment now. Oh, the frame rates are going in the pooper. Let's make sure we don't lose too much speed here. All right, autopilot is off. I have control of the aircraft. Uh, two one, hotel two, line up and wait on wait three three. be a little bit rough of a landing it's it's really it seems very laggy to me right now like I'm getting like maybe a handful of frames a second in the headset so it's not great but we're lined up nicely we're coming in a good uh, good angle here I think a little bit off to the right maybe definitely coming in at good speed oh what are you saying I'll check it in a second. <laughs> oh yeah, here comes the space warp. Got six gold kilo contact ground to go for now. All right, yeah, we're landing here. Oh come on, come on, 
one. Short two eight zero exit runway when able. There we go. It's going in, in the pooper a. Shouldn't be looking down there and get run off the runway. The proper aviation term, I believe it is. Yes. Quite the quaint little airport here. I wonder if we should be on the other side, but uh, we could just park in this guy's front yard. Chalk 280, clear of active. Chalk 280, stay with me until fully clear of active. Oh, I am fully clear, okay. Oh, there's a guy over there. Welcome to Ilo Pango International Contact Ground on one two one decimal nine. Enjoy your afternoon. Drop two one departure frequency one two eight eight zero five. When? Truck two eight zero request taxi to parking. Truck two eight zero taxi to General Aviation parking via taxiways Alpha. Okay, we just did that. Those are our guys over there. They're always the ones that I'm looking for. Center 6 to Kilo, hello. Taxi Delta 27, taxi via Yankee. Taxi via 2, Delta. Delta 2, 27, 1 Yankee. Boy, you're brave. You want us to keep coming? Really? I think this is fine right here. I think we are good right here. Best place is to get a pretzel in Vancouver. Bestie. Aw, oh, dude. I have been... First of all, thank you for that. I have been to Besties. They make a mean currywurst, too. If you've never had a currywurst. Oh, it was so good. I'm, I'm of German heritage, and currywurst was... Uh, Oops, something I missed greatly. Come on, stop it. What are you doing? Um, and yes, they do make a wonderful currywurst. I haven't had, tried the pretzel, but I, I'm not surprised that it would be good. So, if we set turn off the fuel valve, we have landed, made it safely to El Salvador. We will head from here probably tomorrow over to Honduras. Thank you for coming by, Sean. Thank you for providing the facts as always. I will keep trying to tinker with the performance of the VR stuff here and try to figure out what Oculus has done to make it a little bit smoother again. But, you know, it's it's uh, it's nice down here. Uh, we're gonna enjoy the weather. We're gonna have some pizza and a movie now. Have a good weekend, folks. Be good to each other.